Hey guys, Richard Holden here and welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about my favorite subject and that's boost. But before we do that, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified for all of these videos. We're talking about boost, junkyard boost on a 3800 series three V6 with a gen five blower. That's right, it is the L32 and we're gonna show you, even though I go to the wrecking yard, get all my great motors from there, every one of them is not perfect. Now we're gonna show you how we made this L32 up on the dyno made it perfect and by perfect i mean we got it running and made some boost in this video i'm going to show you how we got a 3800 series 3 l32 supercharged v6 and yes i know that's a mouthful i'm going to show you how we got it up on the dyno how we ran into a problem cylinder heads how we fixed that and eventually made boost i'm also going to show you different timing levels and do a little tuning we got this thing running and made some boost and i'll show you what it did Okay guys, get things started. What we did, I went down to the wrecking yard and grabbed a 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix GTP 3800 Series 3 motor, rated at 260 horsepower, and grabbed the motor, put it in the back of my truck, took it over to the dyno, and we put it on the dyno. I ran all of the accessories so that we could run all of the water pump and it had the alternator, the power steering pump was run, the AC, obviously none of that stuff was pumping anything other than the water pump, but all the accessories were there. We ran the stock exhaust manifolds and a three inch exit out of the stock exhaust manifolds. We ran just an open throttle body, the stock blower, all that stuff. We did upgrade the injectors because we were eventually going to be running more boost and E85 and different things. So we had larger injectors that we ran all this with our Holly HP management system. We finally got it up and running. We had the 3800 Camaro rear wheel drive, uh, bell housing on here and even a Camaro flywheel on this thing. So we got it all running and I was hoping it was a good runner. We grabbed it from the wrecking yard from a crash car, which is always a good idea. That way you know that when it was, it was driving, hopefully when it wrecked. And so the motor should probably be in good shape. Now we ran this thing up on the diner right off the bat and I realized, hey, this is not making the power that it should. And the way I know that is this thing, when we ran this thing, it only made 258 horsepower. As you can see here at the peak and 273.6 foot pounds of torque. Although that's not bad, that's not even what the motor is rated at by the factory. And I thought that something was off. Normally when we run these, because we run these with optimized air fuel and timing, it's a little bit colder the way that we run it. It has an open exhaust, obviously an open throttle body. So the power numbers are generally up the way that we run it compared to the factory, even though in this case, we're not running electric water pump, we're running all the accessories, but still this thing should be making more power than this. So we did a, a leak down and a compression test on it and realized that, hey, this thing, <laughs> this thing is kind of light in a couple of the cylinders. So I thought, well, you know, I can go get another one because actually this L32 was purchased so that I could replace an L67 that had dead holes in it. So I went over immediately and got this motor, was hoping for good things. We put it up on the dyno, tried to run it and made this power. So we're, I was in the same boat basically. So I had to decide, do I go get another blower motor or do I try to fix this one? So in the end, I decided to fix this one. What we did was take the heads off. And at first we did the razor blade rebuild. So we just, clean the heads. What we did was take the valves out and, and it only seemed to be bad on one side of the motor. But we did, uh, what we did was lap the valves in. We used some polishing compound and a drill just to get a good pattern back on the intake and exhaust valves on that one cylinder head and put it back in. And while we got fairly decent, um, compression testing and leak down numbers, the thing just still wanted to make this power. So I thought, well, I'm going to take these heads off and have them professionally done and see what happens. And here are the results of me getting the heads done and taking them to L&R Automotive. What they did was these heads have cracks in them and not uncommon for this head casting. But what they did was put new seats in. Obviously they did a valve job, a very light surface just to make sure that it was flat. And here is the result of the head change. 
And you can see now the thing was starting to make power. We were up to 272 horsepower, 200 and almost 80 foot pounds of torque, 279.8. Now the thing was making a little closer to what I thought it was and still not, I, I think that this thing should be up above this given the factory power rating, but I haven't run one of these L32s ever. I've run, I've run other L67s way back in the day, and that's really the only thing that I have to compare it to, but we knew that this curve was nice and smooth, the boost was doing what it's supposed to, everything was kind of working out, so this was a good starting point to do other changes. So now what I'm gonna do is to show you what happened when we did some tuning on this, and I'll show you the effective timing on a supercharged combination. Now that we've demonstrated that we actually got our motor up and running and fixed the cylinder head the second time and had it done professionally, what I did was I want to show you the effect of timing on this 3800 Series 2. And what we did was we started out about 19 degrees of total timing. This was actually run with the E85. We also ran this thing with pump gas, and I'm going to be showing you that in another video. We're going to be comparing the supercharger to pump gas versus E85, both supercharged. And after we ran a turbo on this, because the only thing better than a boosted motor is a boosted motor that you also add boost to. So that's coming up in part three. In part two of this video series, I'm going to take the 3800 Series 3 motor and we're going to do the normal modifications to it. We're going to do a different air inlet system. We're going to do the long tube or tubular headers to replace the stock exhaust manifolds. And we're going to do, as you always do on a supercharged combination, we're going to do pulley changes. And we're going to turn the boost up because that's what you do. But right now, I want to show you the effect of timing on this supercharged application. So this was 19 degrees. And remember, this was actually run with E85 to allow us to do this. So we added another degree. And then we added two more degrees. Then another two degrees, and I think we got up around uh, 24 to 25 degrees of total timing with E85 at the factory boost level. This kind of shows you that this thing just continued to respond to timing, and it made a pretty big difference in power. We were all the way up to 291 horsepower and 295 foot-pounds. Not surprising that the supercharged combination would really like E85, given there's no factory air-to-water or obviously air-to-air -air intercooler. And even though we're running about, uh, this, is, this is showing in about nine pounds of boost or so at the very top, it kind of has a little bit of a rising curve, and we're going to go over that a little bit when we start talking about the boost curves, and especially when we start talking about the different pulley ratios, because we're seeing a dramatic increase in boost at the top, and that really has nothing to do with the blower uh, or the pulley that we've chosen. It actually has more to do with the efficiency of the motor, because as you rev this thing, the mild camshaft and stock heads are kind of limiting stuff with that blower. So if we can put a camshaft in it, ported heads and stuff, it will bring the boost level down, but it'll eventually bring the boost or bring the power level up, which is exactly what we want to see. But the great news is we got the 3800 running. It's running really well. It likes the 85. So we got lots of testing coming up, including running a turbo with our blower. Okay guys, are you ready to make some comments? Here is the boost curve that we're seeing on the engine dyno with our 3800 Series 3 supercharged motor with the Gen 5 motor and the stock pulleys. We have a rising boost curve actually. We're starting out about four and a half pounds and it stays in the five to five and a half range for a lot of the curve out to about 46 to 4700. It starts rising pretty steadily and out at 6,000 we're seeing almost, we're seeing 9.4 pounds. I want you guys to let me know in the comments you, you 3800 supercharged guys, what does your factory boost curve look like? It's been a long time since I've ridden in one of these out on the street, but I thought that the curve was a little flatter than this with the stock pulley. So let me know what you guys are seeing in the comments. What kind of boost are you guys seeing at like 3000 RPM? What are you seeing at four and five and 6000 RPM? So let me know in the comments. This boost curve is very consistent. We've made run after run after run on different kinds of fuel and all kinds of stuff. And this is kind of what it's doing. I just wanted to know if we should continue to see this when we change the pulley. Obviously, it's going to raise the boost everywhere. And what I think we're seeing out at the top is that the cylinder heads and more than anything, the stock camshaft is really limiting flow. So I think if we put a camshaft in this, we're probably going to straighten this curve out. But again, let me know what you guys think in the comments.
<laughs> okay guys, what's the takeaway on our 3800 Series 3 supercharged V6 with the Gen 5 supercharger I'm talking about? Of course, the L32 motor. What is the takeaway from this video? Well, it's this, don't give up. <laughs> If we gave up, I would have had to go to the wrecking yard and get yet another motor to fulfill my needs so I could run this thing on the dyno, but I did not. What we did instead was take off the cylinder heads and have the cylinder heads fixed. Now, I tried doing the Richie razor blade rebuild, but that didn't seem to do it. So we actually took the heads over to my buddy Derek at l &R Automotive and he fixed them up. Turns out they were cracked, they had bad valve seats, and he did a valve job on them, and when we put them back on, Boom, everything was working perfect. We got to run boost, we got to run a little E85. You're gonna see in part two of the video, I'm gonna show you all kinds of modifications we did. We tried more boost, we tried long tube headers, we tried an air intake, and then after that in part three, fingers crossed, we're gonna add boost to our boost with a turbo. That's right, I'm talking about a compound system. So make sure to stick around, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, so you know when these videos come up, because they're coming and it's gonna be super cool.